This is a monitoring system that we built for a county government to monitor their police and fire public safety radio network. I'll walk you through the kinds of things we're monitoring and then we'll talk about the outputs and how they get alerts when things go wrong. So starting on the left we have a generator and that generator runs on propane. So the first thing we did was to take a machine readable propane gauge and just replace the needle gauge that was already on the tank. If your tank has a common float it's very easy to just swap out the needle gauge. You don't have to drain the tank or do a lot of work to get any of the internals. There's a magnetic linkage between the gauge and the float inside. So you just remove the gauge on top and you don't have to open the tank at all. So that's very convenient. So we did that and that was a zero to five volt output. And we captured that output at one of these D-wire nodes. They're very small, just like this. And then they go to an RJ12 port. And so they're digitizing the signal and then sending it back to the RTU, which could be a couple hundred feet away. And the handy part about that is you don't get any degradation because it's already been digitized. So the signal comes home, and that's being picked up by the NetGuardian RTU inside the hut. And the NetGuardian, or any RTU you're using, is your central collector out at your remote location. So we're not only picking up propane, but many other things. We're picking up discrete alarms, which are also known as dry contacts. And we have 20 inputs on the NetGuardian 420. That's what the 20 is for, those 20. So we're bringing those in from all sorts of different equipment alarms, miscellaneous sensors like door and motion, smoke detector. So we have those. Then we put a temperature sensor, which is also a little D-wire node, and that is next to the HVAC system to say, are we cooling the site properly? And if the temperature started to rise too high, you'd be able to trigger an alert. And then finally here at the site, we have two battery strings and the voltage, which is an analog reading, is coming back into the NetGuardian. With the NetGuardian's analog circuits, we can monitor any voltage between negative 90 and positive 90 volts. So battery strings, whether they're negative 48 or plus 24, are easy to monitor using the analogs on a NetGuardian. And this has a few analogs, so we're able to take in the batteries and still have a few more for other purposes. Once all this is collected out at this little tower site that you see pictured here, the NetGuardian is a LAN-enabled device, and it's going to communicate back over the network and in this case, we could have reported to any SNMP manager, but this client chose to use our Tmon master station, which is actually polling the NetGuardian at regular intervals. So it's collecting alarm data constantly, and if anything changes, it's going to be able to alert you. You can also see that the Tmon is being used in an SNMP manager capacity because it can handle SNMP protocol. So some switches that the client already had were coming in via SNMP traps going into Tmon. So then what happens? How do you monitor this network? You could access the NetGuardian's web interface directly, but there's no need to do that when you have a master station like a Tmon because you can just interact with the Tmon and you see everything from every site you have, not just one site. So if you look at this, we have a couple different things. You can hop on the web browser to configure or to view the status of your network. The Tmon's web browser also has a map-based interface that you can look at. So if you want to set up icons on the map and let your team drill down, you can even have photographs of what the site looks like inside. It's a nice way to make it intuitive. Even if you have somebody you just hired recently, they should be able to understand what's going on. You can also send email out of the Tmon to different people. So different kinds of alarms. You might have a security team. You might have a power team, a generator fuel person. These can all get different emails for different kinds of alarms. Email can also be triggered to SMS. So you can send email to, for example, this is the DPS phone number at vtex.com. So if our phone number were a Verizon cell phone, sending to this email allows an email to be converted to an SMS and you just get it on your phone as an alert. Nowadays with smartphones, obviously emails might just be enough. You just send an email to your cell phone. But if you'd like to get a text message as a little more of a higher level or direct alert that you're going to notice a little faster, that can be a good way to do it. So this is a pretty straightforward monitoring system, but you can see that we're collecting a lot of different alarms. So if you have any questions about anything you've seen here or you want a similar system for your own network, give us a call, 1-800-693-0351. You can also get on the website, dpstele.com, for a lot more information about monitoring systems like this one.